Hey guys, today we're going to be focusing on how to add volumetric effects by using V-Ray Environment Fog. Uh, this is going to allow us to add uh, volume, depth, um, fog, atmosphere. Uh, it's definitely going to help add you know, a lot more visual interest and appeal. We're going to, of course, be able to add things like God rays uh, to make things look a little bit more cinematic uh, and tell more of a story, right? So it's going to have a direct impact on the mood that we're trying to accomplish here uh, with our renders. So as you see here, I have this render uh, of this nice clean interior, uh, just using clay materials right now for this demonstration. Uh, here's the before, so you can see it still looks roughly about the same. Uh, there's some minor post here uh, being applied to this, you know, with some white balance, uh, expo minor exposure adjustments, and a curves. Um, but the difference between these two, right, you can now start to see these god rays coming in and the room start to fill with a little bit more subtle um, volumetric effect like, like the fog that we're going to be adding here, right? So uh, I have this scene here. So I'm going to move this over. And I'm just going to quickly just run through it. I mean, it's our ba basic environment that we have. Uh, just very simple V-Ray materials. You can see just... Uh, kind of a light gray, uh, basic reflection color, you know, I wanted to give it a little bit of uh, sheen uh, and glossiness, so the reflection glossiness is turned down quite a bit. This is one material, is applied to everything in the scene. You can see that I have a dome light that I use from HDRI Haven. It's uh, currently connected and set up properly. Uh, I have a V-Ray Sun as well, so you can, if I zoom out, you can kind of see I'm um, using the uh, Giuseppe Bridge from HDRI Haven. And with the V-Ray Sun, I'm kind of roughly angling it the same angle as the Sun uh, in the HDRI, right? And you can see that I have the intensity down quite a bit there. So, and then I have this bulb. Uh, V-Ray me mesh light that's applied to this bulb here. So you can see that uh, right there. And it's set to, I use lumens, use about an intensity a multiplier of 650 lumens, which is typically what you would use uh, maybe between four and 600 lumens of uh, a reading light. All right, so that's our material and light setup um, for our, let's see, render settings. I'm just gonna be using uh, you know, progressive for this test with the default settings and then just irradiance map and light cache. Here are the settings. You can pause and take a look at whatever you need to. And I am just using, uh, probably the most important one here is just using V-Ray Denoiser because it's going to clean up a lot of this noise from these uh, lower settings that we're going to be doing. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and show you the camera settings. So. If I scroll down, v, extra V-Ray attributes, you can see that I have an F number of about 2.8. So the aperture is open quite a, quite a bit. We have a shutter speed of the default 200, and I boosted ISO a bit uh, to increase the sensitivity of the camera sensor. Okay, and the render just finished. You can see it's roughly about the same. It's exactly the same. The only thing is the uh, quality and samples uh, from the progressive render. Uh, so Everything looks good. I'm happy with the lighting. Now we can go ahead and add uh, our volumetric uh, effect. So we want to do that in our render settings. And we want to go to overrides, volumetric, and just use uh, environment volume. And here, environment volume, go ahead and hit the dialog box here. And I want to go down to V-Ray, volumetric. And I want to select V-Ray environment fog. Let's go ahead and select that. And if I go to the attribute editor, so I'm going to move my render settings over. And if I just take the default settings as they are and try to render, this is what happens. We get a black screen, right? So everything is kind of uh, engulfed in this super thick fog. So I'm going to show you how to set the proper settings. 
As I always recommend, make sure to head over to the Chaos Group documentation for the V-Ray Next uh, V-Ray environment fog, and it has all the settings that we're about to go through uh, in much greater detail. Uh, I'll be sure to explain the settings that I'm changing uh, for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, but you see it breaks everything down really well. Here are the main settings that we need to adjust to start getting some good fog, which is the fog distance and the fog height. And you can, of course, even give it some you know, textures and add caustics. And uh, we're going to be messing with some GI settings here shortly. And yeah, so just make sure to go through that. It's just on the Q, uh, KS group help desk. So now that I have that, I will go ahead and start adjusting these settings. Now, the fog distance, you know, and the fog height, that's really uh, one of the most important settings here. Because if I go ahead and just create a simple cube here, and, you know, in the channel box, go ahead and give it, you know, like 100 by 100 by 100, right? We can see that this is, you know, the area that this encompasses, right? So if I want to actually encompass this entire room, right? And I'm only using this right now for visual visualization purposes. So if I set maybe the height to about 500, right? Fully encompasses the environment here. And then if I go to like width and depth, I maybe set that to about 1,000, 1,500. Oops, let me set that to an actual 1,000. And you can see that, um, yeah, it roughly does it. I mean, just to be safe, I'll, I'll just use 1500, right? So it's going to fully encompass this. And this is what we want to use for the distance as well as the height. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete that, right? So we're using 500 for the height and about 15 for the distance. So now that I kind of help visualize the space, right? This is why, this is why scale is always so important. So you want to make sure your scene is properly to scale. So when you actually start putting in dimensions and settings for other properties, it's all going to behave correctly, right? So I'm going to set the fog height to 500. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set the fog distance to 1500. And OK, and here you can see what we have so far. Uh, again, I'm using progressive. so. We're starting to get the fog coming in, and it's starting to behave the way that we'd expect. Uh, if you start to notice things get a little bit too thick, right? Uh, the fog is too dense. That's where obviously you can change the fog density. You know, I typically maybe go from 0.6 to 0.8. Uh, you know, the thicker it this is, it starts to make the room obviously fill with fog and sometimes make it look like uh, it's filled with smoke. Um, in this case, we don't really want that. So maybe like, you know, 0 0.75, 0 0.6. And then I am going to increase the step size, right? So if we take a look at the settings again, you can see here with the step size that the larger your fog distance, right? The larger that your step size is going to be, right? And so if we're increasing our fog distance, you typically want to increase the step size, which is going to help you and your render times. Just know that if you start to increase it too much, it is going to really add a lot of noise uh, to your fog, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make sure uh, to bump that up. I'm going to just bump that up to maybe about four uh, to help. So once I'm happy, those are, uh, oh yeah, of course, we want to also enable scatter GI. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and test this out with another uh, with another render. All right, and here we are with our latest settings. You can see the difference, right? Now that I lowered fog density and also uh, increased the step size. Uh, obviously, one of the more important ones is scatter GI. Now that this GI, the scatter GI, is enabled. Light is actually able to bounce within the fog. You can see previously it wasn't, you know, really doing that. It was just bouncing through the regular environment, but now it's actually bouncing through the fog and really filling this uh, room with some nice volumetric effects. Okay, so once 
you go ahead. You can feel free to refine these settings to get something that uh, you're happy with. But you want to, of course, jump back to your render settings for final production render. Switch over to bucket. Um, and I'm just going to use, you know, these these settings here. One uh, for min subdivs, max subdivs 24, threshold 0 0.02, 24. Uh, I'm not doing final final, but I just wanted something that cleaned up pretty nice. And I'm just doing a 1K render here. And obviously the most important one is using the denoiser here, which is going to significantly help uh, help clean up a lot of that noise. I'll move that over. Uh, and what we end up getting is this final render here. You can see that I can probably increase some of that the samples and subdivs a bit to clean that up. But overall, this is the result that you're going to get once you go to final production. Um, and last thing to keep in mind is that this is kind of, this is what you want to do at the very end of your renders, your render process. Volumetric uh, fog effects, environment fog is very expensive. As you can see, without fog here, for this simple 1K render, it took about 54, 55 seconds. And this is just clay, this is no material, so that'd be even longer with materials. And for a 1K render, uh, it quadrupled the render time to uh, over four minutes, uh, just to add the fog. Again, it is definitely worth it, but it's just something to keep in mind for your work process. Um, and as you're working, if you just jumped back to your render settings under overrides, you can just disable it render without the fog and when you're ready and happy with uh, everything just go ahead and kick it back on kick off a render and uh, just let the computer do its thing all right i'll see you guys in the next tutorial